In our last video, we looked at 9QI and how it can be used to determine the image quality of our radiograph. And I'll drop that link up above here now. In this one, we're gonna look at a densitometer and how it's used to assess the amount of transmitted light while we're reviewing our radiographs. So in order to understand density, really we have to understand the changes in thickness throughout our welded joint. So in our base material, we have a thickness. But in the weld, we have the material thickness plus the excess weld metal on one side, on the top. And then on the inside, we have a penetration thickness. So that when added together, those three things will make a thicker material for our radiation to pass through to produce our latent image on our radiograph. Now, when that happens, we see something like this, where the weld metal in the center is thicker than the material either side. And what we get is where it's black, the material is thinner, it's less dense, and therefore it's letting through more radiation, and that produces a black image. And where it's thicker in comparison, we get greater density, and therefore the material is thicker. Now, if we put way too much radiation through in one go, the whole image will be black. And if we don't put enough radiation through as well, all of the image will be white. So we're trying to find that balance of what should my exposure time be to just get in power and just get the right amount to be able to see these differences because of course any defect that comes up in the weld we want to see we don't want it to be too white or too black now that was on a plate but let's look at pipes so here what we have is off when we're shooting through let's say this is a double wall double image what we'll have is a thickness one at the top and a second thickness at the bottom and we add those together to make our combined penetrated thickness but to the sides of that pipe when radiation passes from top to bottom the sides will see a much greater thickness so what do you think will happen with the image and how it will it look before we had white in the center and black on the outside but what's going to happen is we're going to see something like this so to the far extremes of the image where there is no pipe that will be fairly dark if not pitch black because all the radiation will be going through there and then as we come in towards the center we'll see the very large penetrated thickness of that t3 position and that won't let too much radiation through and then we'll see a gradient a gradient sort of center portion as of course as we move through to the center line it, the combined thickness becomes thinner and thinner so what a densitometer does is looks to read those differences in density and one way we can do that is we can use a calibration strip now this is an agfa calibration strip and what you can see is we start from one which is really light all the way through down to 14 on this one now the next question is well what's a what's a good amount of density on this on this strip very often we aim for between one to four uh, sometimes one to five on the acceptance criteria so what we're going to do is we're going to take our densitometer and check it against what these values would be and that's going to tell us if our radiograph is too light and therefore we can't see any defects are too dark and we can't see any defects so here we are on the light table and what i'm going to do is i'll just turn this on and we'll see our radiograph so what we're trying to do is make sure that the 
radiographic density or the transmitted density from the light in the light box through the image allows us to see the right amount of things. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to use our densitometer. Um, first things to do though is to turn on and zero out the densitometer. So if I come here and I turn it on, I'll get a number, and it says zero at the minute, but if I was to put it onto the image, I, I get a number from it, but is that correct? Well, what we have to do first, I'm just gonna lift my light guard up so I can get to where there's no image directly onto my light box, and then I can zero that off of there. Right, and I'll just drop this back down. So now, when I put it onto the image, I'll get my densitometer reading. So that's 3.37, and I can take them from a few different places. 3.42, we'll take someone in the world. 2.48, you know, bounce around a little bit, 3.3. .3. So we can see that our densities for this image are well within a sort of normal one, two, uh, four is, is a value. And is that, is that straightforward? And of course we can see where we've got some defects coming up here. Of course, there's a, the material is a lot thinner, so the density is drops and allows more radiation through, so those defects are black. The weld metal itself is a lot more white because it's thicker, it's more dense, less radiation's getting through. We can see on this some of our uh, IQIs, our 10 FEEN, so we can start counting back some of our wires there and making sure they're right. But really between the densitometer readings here and the IQI wires, and you can see we've got two IQIs because of the length of the sample, that we can prove quality of the radiographic image and show that when I look at this image, I should have a high degree of confidence that any defects will show and I won't lose things because the quality isn't right.